Love, God, and tattoos. I know what you're thinking. Parker, what in the world are you going to be talking about today? Coming up next, right here on The Right Stuff. You are listening to the best, the only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stuff, and you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Cocono, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Cole. Hi, and welcome to the show. You are at the right place at the right time. I'm your host, Parker J., the queen of Tuesday nights. Let me tell you, I am so happy and excited today that you are here for another edition of the show. We're going to have a phenomenal time with my guest co-host and contributor today, A.R. Robinson, but that's coming up in just a few moments. First of all, I want to thank you all so much for celebrating my four-year anniversary last week. My papa called in. Some of you had your comments and questions and just interacting with me. You know, we've been doing this show together for four years, and I cannot thank you enough for your support. So from me and everyone at PJC Media, thank you so much for making the right stuff exactly what it is, the right place for writers. As always, I want to thank you for calling in. If you want to call in and talk to our guests, you can call in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Co. hashtag write stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff radio show. We'll be right back. Are you a reader looking for more compelling Christian fiction? Maybe something a little more edgy or a bit more real? Are you tired of most Christian fiction shying away from the truth and settling for a rose-tinted view of the world and its issues? Or are you an author who has a compelling story to tell but you're afraid it doesn't jive with today's brand of Christian or secular fiction? Are you tired of Christian publishers telling you that your content is too edgy? Or maybe you've tried submitting your content under the radar to secular publishers only to be told your themes are a bit too religious. We invite you to take a look at the Crossover Alliance. We are an online publishing company that specializes in edgy Christian speculative fiction, speculative fiction with Christian themes and real world content. Our company is formed from authors and readers just like you who are breaking into the mainstream and Christian markets with this compelling genre. Head over to the www.thecrossoveralliance.com for all the details on who we are, what we do, and what we accept. Right now, if you sign up for our email newsletter, you'll receive a free digital copy of our first short story anthology. Check us out today and help us spread the word about the Crossover Alliance, where light shines brighter in the darkness. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. joeytweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. joeytweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. joeytweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J., and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5. Again, so glad you're here with me. We are going to be talking about love, God, and tattoos. And I know some of you are thinking, what in the world is Parker talking about? Well, you know, I've always been an advocate of edgy Christian fiction. I've always been an advocate of realistic Christian fiction. Not to say that there is not a place for the more conservative, more uh, wholesome Christian fiction that's out there. I would never say that. You know, I've had all type of authors on this show in the last four years. But I always want to kind of delve into that area that some people just have definite opinions about. 
And definitely when it comes to love, God, and tattoos, I can tell we're going to have a great, great discussion with my guest co-host and contributor today. Like I said before the break, if you want to call in, you can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Co. Hashtag write stuff with your questions and comments. Also, the chat room is available for you. So if you want to sign into the chat room, simply click on the link on your page, on your social media page. You can sign in under the show description and you can sign in and listen to the show and ask questions as well. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest co-host and contributor today, A.R. Robinson. A.R., how are you doing today? I am doing fabulous. How are you? I am just super duper fabulous. I am flying high. I've had a really good day today. And so I can tell. I've had a good day today. (laughs) And it wasn't like anything really interesting happened. I'm just really happy. I I think the Lord has given me this bubble of happiness and I'm going to accept it and take it. I'm really excited about that. So I want people to know more about you. So I can always read your bio, but it's always better for you to tell us about yourself in your own words. So go ahead and give us a little hint of who AR is. So AR, Alicia Raquel Robinson. I um hmm. I was born and raised in Chicago, but I um have been a spiritual seeker pretty much my entire life. My mom did have me in a Methodist church, but for whatever reason I didn't know it then. It didn't um strike a chord with me. And that's because the gospel wasn't preached, right? Tradition was. So from the age of like zero until I say the age of twenty seven, I pretty much um um struggled with this whole relationship with God. I wanted to know who he was. I knew there was a God. I could feel that there was some type of force outside of ourselves, but I didn't know who or what or he or she was or it was. So, I mean, I went all over the place. I went to Buddhism, went to Hinduism. I practiced yoga. I studied the sutras of Patanjali. I was everywhere, right? And so in 2007, as I was 27 years old, and that's when I kind of got on E, and I was kind of just trying. Um, I was tired of trying, if that made sense. And long mm-hmm. story short, I ended up in this really um, non-denominational, really spirit-filled church in Chicago. I ended up back in Chicago. I live in L.A. and Vegas and Texas and Louisiana and all that. And so um, the pastor said, you tried the rest, now come try the best. So I'm like, okay, well, I did try a lot of other gods, so let me walk down the aisle and try this. When I gave my life to Christ, it's so funny, I I couldn't say I believe Jesus was Lord. It was more like, uh, oh, let me just see. I mean, I tried everything else, let me just see. And here we are 10 years later, the 17th of August is my 10th year anniversary, and I'm about to publish an eighth book in this series, and he has totally taken my life to a totally different level. So that's kind of who I am in a, in a nutshell. I love Jesus. I love yoga. I love coffee. I love wine. I love travel. I mean, yeah, I just, I love life. Like you say, you're happy just because you're alive. I am happy just because I am alive, nothing else. You know, what's so interesting is that when we walk these these different spiritual paths, and I've had authors from all uh, walks of life on the show as far as like how they came to the faith. I've had them all from mm-hmm. all walks of life. It's always interesting to see how God takes us and where he takes us from. He takes you from the mm-hmm. serving at the altar of other gods to serving the one true God. But, you know, it's mm-hmm. always interesting how God gives us that spark inside of us that seeks that we use to seek him, he, that we seek him. You, do you know what I'm saying? Like he gives us that. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one who can feel the void in you. My mom used to always say, it's a God filled void that only he could feel. Right. Like a gosh, void that only he could feel. And so I love hearing about your story, hearing about that kind of thing, you know? And so when you started working on writing, was this the initial plan that you had or were you going to do something else? No. So, okay. So before 2007, I said I moved to LA and Vegas. I was a dancer. Like my plan was to dance for Janet Jackson. I wanted to tour the world with Janet Jackson. I wanted to do Rhythm Nation. I wanted to do If. I wanted to do all those dances. So that was, that was what I was into was dancing. And then, so when I gave my life to Christ, I literally said, all I'm going to do is go to work, go to school go to work, go to church, and read the Bible. That's it. And that's literally, for like a year, all I did. I had no vision. I had so, was so disconnected from purpose. I had all this energy I have about this, what I'm involved in now, was not there whatsoever. I literally hmm. gave up this whole Hollywood. Because when I was out there, I did a lot of extra work, like background acting work. I wasn't trying to, but I somehow, that, you just kind of get caught up in all that when you're out there 
So I did a lot of, like, acting and dancing and stuff like that. I gave all that up, and I said, no, I'm totally just going to read the Bible and just see what it is that um, – because I wanted to learn more about God. So I wanted to know who is this God? Who are you? So I wanted a relationship with Jesus. And in that, kind of like what Matthew says in 6.33, I think it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. The writing came to me two years later. I did. I never wanted to be a writer, ever. I mm-hmm. never, ever imagined myself a writer. In fact, I got a D when I was in college, a D as oh, in no. dumb in college English. Yes, oh, no. I got a D in English. So this was not my plan whatsoever. He literally added it to me. I find that amazing how you say you were in acting with all these other things, and then the Lord takes you and you say, I'm going to focus on him. I think that there is something that I think it's missing within the church today as a yes. whole, not as individuals, but as a whole, right. to focus on the Lord. And I mm-hmm. think you made a good point when you said that. The question I had to ask you is, what is what is it like to act in Hollywood? I mean, I have no clue. I mean, I dream of my books becoming a Hollywood movie. <laughs> I think we all do. But what is it like to act? In Hollywood, I mean, tell me what. Okay, the, what, so when I say I act, I I was a background actor, so I'm I'm the one when you're okay. So, so like Game of Thrones, that's my show, right? Game of Thrones just premiered on uh-huh. Sunday. So a background mm-hmm. actor, I was like the walking, like the Night King. I wasn't the Night King. I was like one of the in his army who was just kind of walking <laughs> in the background. That was me. <laughs> And you're going to sit there and watch you walk across right? the street. <laughs> That's exactly what I was, that was me. <laughs> but let me tell you, it was so fun. It, there's an energy, it's interesting. And Hollywood has a very dark energy. Um, mm-hmm. And I wasn't even saved and I saw that. It's a very dark energy. However, on set, everyone is so happy to be there. Like, we're just happy to be on set. We don't care what we're doing. That it's just a, a very creative, um, almost freeing kind of energy out there and it's it's really um what's the word it's contagious you know okay. like I remember I was on set I was at this rave I forgot I think it was the Gilmore Girls I can't remember some tv show that's not on um, tv anymore and it was a rave scene, Gilmore Girls and this that? guy <laughs> and so his, this guy was like your eyes are just sparkling right now I remember he told me that like your eyes are just like lit up and it was because I was just so happy to be there, but we all were, you know. And so what's it like to act in Hollywood? It's a drug. It's, it's one of those drugs where if you're called to do it, you love being there. You'll do it for free. You just love being around people who are creating something new and something someone's going to be talking about a year from now And because it's different. It's not getting up in the morning at 6 o'clock and getting the kids ready for school and going to your 8 to 5 and coming home. and You know, it's, it's, it's a completely different routine that is mm-hmm. just – it's just adopted out there and it's it's okay to be like that out there. So it's for me I loved it. I I moved out there twice and and honestly the Lord's calling me to move out there again. So I'll be moving out there mm-hmm. next year. And mm-hmm. so it's it's yeah, if you're called to it, it's it's fun. It's fun and it's a dream. All your dreams can come true out there, literally. I remember I was in California, not not in Hollywood, nothing that uh, not that spectacular, but I was in there uh, for a writers mm-hmm. conference, a Christian writers conference in California a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. I have been talking about it on the show forever. I was in La Mirada, and even being in California was surreal for me. I said, I can't believe in California. I mean, a lot of things happen yeah. here in California, you know. And, Everything uh, happens there. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was amazing, and one of the things that happened was that I lost weight because I had to walk everywhere I went. <laughs> so I lost mm. a ton of weight when I was out there, and of course I was there when it went to 100 degrees, and so right. like burning. <laughs> oh, this is a Midwestern girl, Parker's Midwestern. Okay, it gets hot, but not burn, you know. And I was telling people who asked me my trip, I said, you know, the weather fools you out there. It starts off really cool, like it's a cool morning. You're like, oh, this is gonna be a great day, and you go from cool to burn. There's no transition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's no, you know, right. hey, I'm going to gradually burn you. No, this is a, you know, cool burn. That was exactly what happened. And so we were laughing about that because it's so different. But while I was there, I was so struck how the multi-ethnic groups are out there. So many different ethnic yes. ethnicities are out there. And then for a Christian Writers Conference, I met so many different people. And we were just really... Um, in tune with the message we were there for, we were Christian writers or writers who are Christian, depending on how you look at it. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on right. in our show. Um, but we were talking about that and just feeling all of us working together under the same, under under Christ. You know, we're all coming from different perspectives. We're all coming from different backgrounds. But having that in there, working that all together, I just felt as if 
this was a great calling to be a writer, you know, and mm-hmm. that you embrace that. Yeah. While. Here you are, 10 years later, your eighth book out, writing about something that is, you know, quite personally, I mean, personally, but quite frankly, is considered uh, taboo within Christian uh, right. fiction because they, because of the tattoos and the Bible and stuff like that, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But, you know, I commend you for that because you may not have seen that, but God all, often takes our dreams. And they're very small compared to what he plans to do with them. They're very small. Mm. But we think if this just happens, guess what? I will be able, I'll be happy. This will be my life. I'll be content. I remember that when I first started writing, AR, I I just wanted to write a book. I just wanted my first book. I had never, never in a clue. And I've said this so many times. I never dreamed I would be doing this, what I'm doing right now, talking to you for my own network. I never dreamt that. That was something that never happened, Mm -hmm. you know. Just why I'm so thankful that God takes those dreams that we have, and guess what? He blows them up. And so I see that right. in your life. Like you want to be with Janet Jackson, you want to dance and do this, right? And guess <laughs> Madonna, yeah, and exploded it. You know, we're talking to Ar Robinson. She is the author of the Love God and Tattoo series. It is available on Amazon.com. So go ahead, love my sister today, and get a copy of her books. Find out what this is all about now. AR, before we go to our next break, I want to ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to um, the way that your spiritual journey led you to Christ, how do you use that experience when you evangelize to others? Um, Well, my evangelism is a little different, unless I'm on a mission. That's fine. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe in um, just going up to someone preaching Jesus unless Mm -hmm. I'm led to do it. I, I believe in, um, I think I'm called to a different sect of people. I think I'm called to people who live maybe a little hard, a hard lives. So I, I like befriending people and just, you know, if you want to hang out in the coffee shop, if you want to go to the bar, you know, whatever you want to do, let's hang out and just kind of get to know me and just kind of see me, almost like my life preach, right? And mm-hmm. then I kind of feel like if you have questions, then we can go from there. I'm not one to just preach Jesus to you every day, all day. Um, unless, again, I feel led to do so. I think people are more motivated and they're more um, captivated by watching you. I think people watch and learn better than we, anything we can preach. Um, but then again, you know, I know people who got, you know, got saved on the corner and that turned their whole lives around. So you know, it depends on what kind of person you're called to be. And so for me, I think it's more of a um, – I have more of a prophetic um, gift than an evangelistic gift, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I, I would, um, I, you know, I rather just get to know a person and just hang out with the person, just be a real human being and not be so worried about Jesus trying to, you know, save this person. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if Jesus is as uptight as Christians are when it comes to everyone getting saved. Yes, I know he's patiently waiting for them, but at the same time, I think he wants us to enjoy life and just enjoy the process and enjoy the journey. Don't feel so pressured and condemned to get everyone saved. I think people can get saved just by watching your life. Just like, oh, I want that. They can easily say something as simple as, oh, wow. that Like the joy you were talking about that you had, that mm-hmm. no reason you just have it. Someone can say, oh, I want that. And I believe they, oh, Jesus can start a relationship with that person just off of that one little desire they have. So I don't think it's necessarily as traditional as mm-hmm. the church has made it out to be. So I don't really approach it that way. And that's a good point because we're all in the kingdom. We're all doing something different in the harvest. We're all doing something different right. and we're all going about it at a different way because he has you in the harvest reaching out a different way than someone else. You know, the point right. is we just don't want to be stagnant. I think that's the biggest thing. We should be stagnant right. in our, you know, we shouldn't like hide, what is it, hide, hide your light under a bushel. You, want, you don't want to do that, you know. And that's why I asked because I sensed that when I was talking to her, I said, I think she probably has a more, uh, for the lack of a better term, organic, more of a relaxed right, that's a good word. stance toward it. Um, not that it's not as important. I'm not saying that because there are those, we need that intellectual conversation. We need that, um, you know, those answers, questions. But sometimes I, I agree with you that by living a life of victory in Christ, that people can be mm-hmm. drawn to that victory. And then they wonder, hey, you know, how can I be victorious too? And we are talking to A.R. Robinson. She is the author of the Love, God, and Tattoo series. I know you're interested in it. Go ahead and get a copy of the book today. You can go on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold to get your copy of Love, God, and Tattoos. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. So if you want to call in and weigh in, 
You can call in at 646-665 and then press 1 to be live on air or hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Co. Hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. God gives humans the gift of making amazing stories to glorify Him. At speculativefaith.com, our ministry is to help fans explore fantasy, science fiction, supernatural stories, and beyond from an intentional and biblical Christian perspective. We share daily articles and have extensive archives tackling hot topics like end times beliefs, the art of writing, creative excellence in the Christian subcultures, discernment, sex, magic, Harry Potter, and space aliens and the Bible. If you are a parent or anyone else with a discriminating palate, our reviewers explore fantastical novels, movies, television, and games in light of God's beauty, goodness, and truth. Want to find Christian stories? The SpecFaith Library lists every fantastical novel we can find from a Christian author. It's all part of our mission to discern, engage, and enjoy fantastical human creativity in honor of our Creator, Jesus Christ. SpeculativeFaith.com, exploring fantastical stories for God's glory. Arthurs, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, virtual book tours is an excellent opportunity for you to introduce your book and who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chat. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, a virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MAGCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. We're back and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J and her guests right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WTJC 104.5. Again, so glad you are here with me. We are talking to the author of Love, God, and Tattoo series. It is available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. The author today is A.R. Robinson. Let me tell you, she is just a fun-loving, free-spirited woman out here preaching the gospel in her own way, by not preaching, but by living her life of victory. So I want you to go ahead and love my sister today and get a copy of her books today. Again, they're called the Love, God, and Tattoos series, available at Amazon.com. You know, A.R., as I was thinking, um, I was thinking about this series when I forgot how I came into contact with you. I think I was just probably surfing the net or something had happened. I saw your series and I was like, oh, what is this interesting? Tattoos, you know. And the first thing that came to mind was, okay, tattoos. You know, you kind of go, okay, tattoos. <laughs> and all, every Bible verse and people's thoughts and opinions all flew through my head and everything. I said, let me just look at what this is about, you know. So I got to ask you, and if it's too personal, no, no problem, but do you have any tattoos? Not yet. No, mm-hmm. I do not. 
Okay. And like my husband has a tattoo. He has a tattoo on his back mm-hmm. from when he was in the army. And then I know dozens of people who have tattoos, you know. Right. And so um, using tattoos, which you know is a hot topic in Christian circles about when it comes to tattoos, where people say, oh, you shouldn't get tattoos. Don't, don't mark up your body. But not mark up your body. For those who get them, who say, I'm actually using, particularly those who have had like a, a changing experience of Christ, they want that aspect of that changing experience of Christ imprinted on their bodies. And I've seen people who've done that too. So they want that right. as a brand almost, you know, it's just, just in your own opinion. And this is just your opinion, no right or wrong answer. What do you think about the whole tattoo thing? Honestly, I think we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, you know, and that mm-hmm. uh, it's in Leviticus that says we shouldn't put imprints on our body. You know, you go to Galatians, Paul says we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, and that's all the law, and that includes tattoos. You know, Jesus came for us to have an abundant life. So if you are the kind of person that um, expresses yourself via tattoos, I feel, even if it's not Christian-related, again, it, you know, I think mm-hmm. if you love golf and you t- tattoo a, a golf stick or a golf club on your arm or you love your child and you tattoo your child's name, you know, you are still blessed of God. Love God and tattoos is the love of God, and my whole purpose, it doesn't matter. It could be love God, tattoos, whatever, love God, pornography, yeah. love God, alcoholism, doesn't matter. The love of God um, really frees us from all our fears and frees us from all our addictions, and it, it frees us to live a life that he created us to live. So whatever it is that you're into, whether it be tattoos or whatever, you know, I feel like if you have a relationship with God, he's going to allow you to express yourself freely. And if that includes tattoos and that includes tattoos and, and this story, Alcatraz, she's, she's wired to, she's a tattoo artist and she mm-hmm. loves tattoos. That's just part of her personality. It's part of her makeup. And I believe there are people like that where tattoos are just a part. There's a preacher in New York, actually. He's part of one of the, one of the largest churches in New York. He's a the Hillsong preacher, Carl Lentz. He has mm-hmm. tattoos, you know, and he mm-hmm, loves mm-hmm. the Lord and preaches the finished work of the Christ with a vengeance, right? So tattoos are a minor issue, honestly. The, the major issue is do you know that how much Jesus loves you and do you know that everything, your sins have been paid for and you've been forgiven? That's more important than if you have a tattoo. I'll tell you one thing. I'll never get one because I don't like pain. That's the that's my main uh, <laughs> barrier to tattoos is pain, you know, and, uh, because, right. and, I, and I was, I was raised very, um, you know, my parents raised me in a certain way and they were like, no, get a tattoo, you know, even though my thoughts have changed on it as I've gotten older, I would never get one. I don't I don't like pain. I mean, I don't mind needles. Mm-hmm. Needles don't bother me. I can look at them sticking a needle in my arm when they draw blood or whatever. It doesn't bother right. me at all. It's just, I don't like pain. I'm like, do I have to get a tattoo? Is this a necessary pain or unnecessary pain? Unnecessary pain, we <laughs> right. don't have to deal with it. That's how I feel right. about it, you know, but hey, you know, but like I said, my thoughts have changed over time. I kind of like how you said that, and I know some of our listeners out there, if you're listening in, uh, it's okay if we, you can disagree. It's okay to disagree. We, do, we can disagree and still be in brotherly love with each other, so we the don't have to make that a huge issue. The only thing we need to issue. agree on is do mm-hmm. you believe Jesus died and rose for your sins? Uh, everything else is great. Even Paul was talking mm-hmm. about that, and he was talking more about it for food and drink in Corinthians, mm-hmm. but basically, you know, a lot of people disagree on stuff, and they, you know, start denominations, and they don't talk to people. That's so, that's not how, I don't believe Jesus would be if he were here. His whole purpose was him. What are your thoughts on Christ, right? What are your, who, who is Jesus? That's what mm-hmm. we need to agree on. Who is Jesus? As long as we agree on who Jesus is, everything else is up really for interpretation. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did get a question. We got a question from Deborah in Sweetwater. Deborah says, and she's just finished reading your first book. I asked her. She just finished reading it. Uh, she says, I can just get to the question here. Come on, uh, social media here. Um, I'm sorry. I feel silly. While I'm getting that question, uh, I want you to tell us mm-hmm. a little bit about h- how the uh, story took place. How did you get this first idea for that story? For, you know, for, okay, for love, God, and tattoos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was in Bible college, and it was a, an assignment that the teacher gave. He it was he wanted us to write a two page testimony on the goodness of God. And I kind of looked around the room and realized everyone was raised in the church. And yeah, they were raised in the church and they left and they came back. But it was, was going to be a boring assignment basically because after we were done writing the two pages, we had to stand up and, and testify. But like mm-hmm. I said, I, I lived in LA twice. And I lived in Vegas, so I was like, well, what if one of those LA girls were here? 
Like, what if one of those girls were in this class doing this assignment? What would their testimony be? And literally, just like that, I knew her name. I saw her face. She, like, popped into my head that quickly. And that two pages turned into 11 pages. And I stood up, and I read all 11 pages. And everybody, the white people, the Brazilian people, the black people, the younger people, the older people were like, oh, my God. Like, who is this Alcatraz? Everyone was interested in her story. And so I just kept writing her. I just, I was like, there are, there are pe- girls like this who exist. There are girls who are living, quote unquote, um, they're just living um, creative lives, if you will. You know, they're just stuck in their addictions. They're, they're confused. They don't know really what's going on. They don't know their purpose. They don't really have any guidance. You know, Alcatraz, she had a great childhood up until the age of 13, but then her family died in a car accident, so now she's an orphan. Now she's by herself. She has no other, and the family that adopted, her, that adopted her were not her real family. Her real family, she doesn't know, and that's kind of where her life starts on the streets, and she's just kind of finding her way. And when I lived in L.A., like I said, I was a spiritual seeker even when I was out there. People just had questions, and they were genuine. You know, they, they genuinely wanted to know who God was, they genuinely wanted a relationship with him. They just didn't really know who he was, so they tried Scientology and Universalism is really big out there, and creating your own religion is really big out there. So they were just kind of all over the place, you know. And so I just wanted to create a story with girls who looked like Traz, who lived hard lives, who had to make difficult decisions, who had to support themselves, and, you know, a nine to five wasn't enough to let them know that God still loves them and God cares for them and God genuinely wants to enter into a deep, intimate, personal relationship with them and fill that God so whole like your mom says we all have. And I don't want those girls to think that they're too far from God because of the decisions that they're making. You know, if they decide to go into a strip club, they decide to do porn, or they sleep with a lot of guys, or they're alcoholics, or whatever it is that they're, you know, involved in, God still died for them. You know, Jesus died for all of us, you know, the world. We say that. Every Christian in the church knows the scripture, but we don't really think who the world is. The world isn't just Christian. The world is the world. It's every single body, no matter where they are, or what they've done, right? And so that was the whole, I didn't know all this when the idea popped into my head. I'm like, oh, you know, this girl seems Alcatraz. I'm going to write about what her goodness of God testimony would be, and that's kind of how it started. But that's, this is where I'm at now with it. And it's basically just to show people that Jesus loves everybody, no matter where you've been or what you've done. I finally got Deborah's uh, question while um, you were okay. responding to that. And you actually answered her first question, which she said, why did you decide to use a tattoo artist in the book? But she also asked, what does she like about Christian fiction genre and what do you dislike about it? And then she also says, do you consider yourself writing edgy as a reader? I would consider it edgy and controversial. The mainstream would be having a fit, mainstream Christian industry, but I'm loving it. Deborah from Sweetwater, thank you so much for your comment. Go ahead and respond to that. Thank you so much, Deborah, for your comment. That's an excellent question. Um, To be honest, Deborah, I do not like Christian fiction. And I don't like it because I feel it's too light. There are certain rules that you have to abide by to be considered Christian fiction. And there's actually like a barometer. Like if you have profanity, whether you're talking Jesus or not, it's automatically considered not Christian fiction, right? Like there's certain things you have to have. And so the um, a few of the Karen Kingsbury and the um, Lewis, what's her name, Barbara Lewis. Yeah. And was mm-hmm. it Lewis? Um, I think it's Deborah Lewis. I think you think Deborah Lewis. Deborah Lewis, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deborah Lewis. <laughs> and, um, um, who, who wrote the, I read the Come Softly, Love Come Softly. I can't think of the yeah, author. I love Janet Oakey. I love Janet Oakey. Yeah, That's her yeah, name. Yeah. I, I love so her. I, I love her. You can't yeah, talk about her. I, <laughs> I, I, I read some of her books and I, and I watched some of her movies. And let me tell you, there is a place for that because, yeah. you know, like when I have kids, I don't want my kids to watch Love God and Tattoos. It's too dark. So there's a place for Christian fiction that's light and family-oriented, and you can take your kids to go see, and you just want to relax, and you don't want your brain to, you know, really get tormented in any kind of way. Then, right. you know, that's great. Christian fiction is great for you. But for me, it's boring, and the storylines are are very simple, and, um, you know, they call it first world problems, I like to call them. And mm-hmm. it's just not for me personally. I don't like to write those kind of stories. Um, I like to write the kind of stories that, that talk to people who the church normally does not talk to. I like to address those issues 
um, that people deal with. And really, I find more people, there's suburban people, and then there's, there's city people, but then there's city people who live in the suburbs, right? The Lord mm-hmm. just transforms us all. I just met a lady in my church, actually. She has two girls. She was asking me about the series, and I was like, this isn't really appropriate for your girls, but she said she wanted to read it because she kind of whispered oh, okay. she was a dancer earlier in mm-hmm. life. So, you know, the Lord takes us out of all kinds of situations. So Amen. that's probably what, what I like about the Christian fiction genre is that it is safe, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a family, if you have children, you can just go to the movies or go to Pure Flix and just watch a movie and not have to worry about what your kids are seeing or getting a good message. It's clean entertainment. Um, it does fill that void. What I don't like about it is it doesn't talk to all Christians and it doesn't talk to all believers. There are a lot of believers who are dealing with a lot more darker issues than Christian fiction will allow you to go into. What I want to do is have Andre from North Carolina. He's on the line here. Andre, thanks for calling in. Do you have a question or comment for our guest? Oh, Hi, Andre. Yeah. Hey, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I was kind of um, thrown back for a minute. Uh, when you were saying that you dislike Christian fiction, but um, like I said, I understand your your feedback, but um, I don't know if I can say it, but I would encourage you um, to look me up and read um, the books that I have published in Christian fiction. Um, they mm-hmm. speak on, on the basic things that you were talking about. Um, well, Andre, let me say that she's referring more so to the mainstream Christian fiction, like the right. old Sweet was not the uh, edgier Christian fictions that I think all three of right. us write, but she's turns like the mainstream, like the Amish and the um, the, you know, the real light sweet. You know, and let me let me ones. be yeah. let me be really clear when I say this too. I went to uh, Mardell's and Family Christian Bookstore. In fact, I used to work at Family Christian Bookstore, and I looked. If you go into the fiction section, you will not see one minority face on any of those covers. Not one. There's not one mm. black person. There's not one Hispanic person. There's not one Asian person. There's not one mixed person. They're telling very pure stories from a select group of people. They're not mm-hmm. telling everyone's story, you know. And so when I say I just like Christian fiction, that's what I mean. I don't think Christian fiction, the publishers in New York, are representing all Christians. They're representing a, a select group of Christians, and that's the issue mm-hmm. I have with that. Right, and I, and I, I do want to defend with you on that. Um, but so I'm glad we, you know, we are, we're coming to agreement on that. Um, my comment is that, um, this one speak, I just, uh, grabbed and pulled in and I love your testimony. Um, and what really pulled me in was the fact when you made the comment that you got away from everything to find your place in, your place in God. And you wasn't coming back until you found it. That's what re- I mean. That really just you know spoke to, spoke to my spirit. And I just you know commend you on on that. You know being you know in the trenches, walking the walk, talking the talk, and then you can come back and and give you know an honest and truthful you know feedback on the on the on the real life situations. And I just love your commitment, and I can hear it in your voice, you know, in your tone that you know you committed. This is not nothing that you're playing with. And I just you know I'm just. Like I said, drawing in to where, you know, I'm going to go read your book myself. And, you know, Thank and you, did, Andre. And, and my question to you is, it, um, throughout your, your writing and, you know, your, your, you know, um, your past, um, you know, history and dealing with these situations, have, have you encountered anyone from, from, from your previous, you know, experiences that have been drawn, drawn to um, a closer walk? Be, you know, with the Lord because of um, you coming to me and finding finding that place. Um, so you want to know if I if I've come into if I've gotten anyone saved since I before I was first, a Christian? Yeah, right. That, that you personally, you know, that you personally knew, you know, um, from your past experiences, have any of have any of them you know, by the Honestly, Andre, just the opposite has happened. So before I got saved, I had three really, let me see, I had three really good friends that I am no longer friends with. So, and a lot of the reason was we fell out because, like, I was agnostic, and they were all Christian. So all three of my friends are Christian. I was agnostic, right? I was kind of doing my whole searching. I get Mm -hmm. saved. And um, I got serious. I mean, I got saved, and I, I mean, I went to Bible college like a year later, and then I'm starting, you know, I, the Lord leads me to start writing this series, and I'm talking Jesus, and I'm talking Galatians, and I'm, you know what I mean? 
And whereas my three friends, they were saved, but it was more like out of, I hate to, I'm not trying to minimize their um, relationship with God, but I don't know if they, um, if, you know, for example, like I, I read the word a lot and, and I know there is no condemnation with anybody, but I don't think they had um, a, like a Bible reading every day. And I don't think they were praying in tongues often. And whereas when I got saved, I was zealous. I'm like, oh my, almost like the apostle Paul, like he got saved and he got so zealous and he took Jesus seriously. And it kind of turned them off. Like one girl was one of my really good friends, which was just like, you sitting here trying to tell me about God? Like, girl, you weren't even believing in God. When I met you in high school, you didn't even know God. And she got offended. So mm. the three people that I was really close to, I'm no longer close to because it's almost like my conviction in Jesus turned them off. They got offended because now mm. the Lord's kind of leading me into ministry. Well, he's called me into ministry. Um, and they knew me when I was not a believer. Um, so yeah, just the opposite has happened really. Um, yeah, unfortunately just the opposite has happened. Well, well, you know, I, I would just say to you, just stay encouraged because, you know, they, they looking at you based on, on, on your past and what they know. Right. That person. Exactly. So, so just keep walking and just keep walking and walking and turning up that light. And then, you know, and, and trust me, you know, um, I, I know from experience, you know, that light, that light will shine bright and then they will, you know, come calling and then asking you, you know, who is this that you talk of? So, you know, like I said, just, to, you know, I'm just like motivated and I, and I just, like I said, just, I just feel, feel, you know, like I said, you, you know, your, your, your um, commitment to this and just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you for that. I received that. <laughs> Andre, thank right. you so much for calling in. I can't wait to have you on very soon. So thanks for calling in today, Andre. All right. Thank you. I have to meet you. Me too. You know, Andre, uh, I remember how you was talking about how you lost your friendships. And, you know, um, it's very interesting because we see the Lord as a peacemaker. But he also said, I, I right. know, he's a two-edged sword. You know, he said, I come to by mother against daughter, father against son. I mean, these are right. this is a real thing, you know. And, it, you know, he said, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to change you, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to separate you from the fire, with fire. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to mm-hmm. separate the wheat from the chaff, and you're going to burn it. You know you know what I'm saying? So these are imagery that's saying it's not right. just all about peace, love, and fluffy clouds. You know, that Christ is right. the lamb, but he's also the lion. I mean, you know, right. he's not just the, the child of God. He's the judge. I mean, there's a lot going yes. on here. And so... You know, yes, the Lord. And you know what? Jesus couldn't even he couldn't even perform miracles in his own hometown. You know, he went back to his hometown and he he had the same power that he had when he was with, you know, in Samaria, the same power that he had when he was walking through Jerusalem. But because they thought they knew him, they couldn't receive from him. And that's so true. You know, my mom, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't mention her, but my mom is actually more on fire for God now than Amen. before. Because she mm-hmm. you know, she prayed me into this. She asked her, she prayed me into this. And I would so believe that. But, yeah, you're right. Like, when you, when you get on fire for Jesus and you become, um, I hate to say a true believer, because that, that makes it sound like those three aren't. I know they do believe yeah. in Jesus. They just mm-hmm. don't, they don't take this word as serious. Like, they don't wake <laughs> up with it. They don't go to sleep with it. They don't listen to it. You know, for me, it's life. It's not just about, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I come here on Sunday. This is life. This is when I wake up. This is when I'm walking. This is everything. This is my meditation. Like, Jesus mm-hmm. is real to me. He is Lord to me. He's alive. And really, it's like... The, there's not a lot of people, I can't say that, but the friends that I had in my life was not on fire like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. like you're saying, that fire, I think that mm-hmm. fire separated us. But it's okay because within that fire, he brought new friends. God is so mm-hmm. faithful. He doesn't want us by ourselves. So if you are, and I'm just, you know, speaking to someone who's listening, but maybe you're, you're not, maybe you and your best friends, because I was one friend I was friends with since um, I was 10 years old and I'm 37. Mm-hmm. Another friend, mm-hmm. two friends I was friends with since I was 17. So we were friends for a very 27 and 20 years, a very long mm-hmm. time. So these are like my closest, oldest friends that I've lost. But mm-hmm. in the midst of losing those three, the Lord brought me different friends who are just as on fire, if not more on fire about Jesus than I am. So, you know, he's just, he's a, he's a gracious God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's a faithful God. So don't think that you have to hold on to these friends because they're familiar. The Lord has something new for you. He has something better for you. Like he says, you can't hold on to the plow and keep looking backwards. If you want to do things mm-hmm. in the kingdom of God, you have to look forward to Christ and just know if friendship is a, is something that, does, that you want, which we all want because we, we're all mm-hmm. interconnected, right? 
he has yeah. awesome people on the other side. If he, if you're like feeling like you're in this p- particular place to where, you know, I, I'm just not getting along with my friend. I've known her for 30 years. Maybe it's time to let her or him go and move mm. forward and meet someone new. And that's okay. It's because the friends that I have now, like I just met this one girl. I'm not exaggerating. She's from Ethiopia. I just met her like a month and a half ago. I feel like mm-hmm. I've known this girl my entire life. Like we, I mean, just became sisters overnight. And she is on fire for Jesus. So I don't feel like I've lost any good thing. There, there's nothing lost in Christ at all. And we are talking to A.R. Robinson. She is the author of the Love, God, and Tattoo series, which is available on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. Can you tell from her voice the fire that is within her? And for those of you who may have felt a little uncomfortable because we were talking about tattoos, just letting you know that the Lord is using her in her own in her own special way, in his special purpose to reach the kingdom. And so I want you to go ahead, love on my sister today, get a copy of her books today, Love, God, and Tattoo tattoos available on amazon.com we're going to go ahead take another quick break we'll come back to talk more about the series and the first two books about alcatraz and being the pearl we're going to get deep down and dirty into that in just a few moments so if you want to call in and weigh in you certainly can call in at 646-668-8485 and press one to be live on air or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Hi. Is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literacations, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you and your book club members a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literacation. Literacations is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com, L-I-T-V-E-R-S-A-T-I-O-N.com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, the Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. Arthurs, are you looking for a new way to get your book in the hands of new audience of targeted buyers? Then a virtual book tour is for you. Right now, Virtual Book Tours is an excellent opportunity for you to introduce your book and who you are as an author. Launching your book is very important. A virtual book tour will connect you with readers. We at WNL, we specialize in book tours, book blasts, radio tours, cover reveals, and Facebook chat. Promoting and marketing your book is what we do. Online publicity, the exposure and the publicity is what you need. Let us help you reach new readers and a new audience. We take care of everything so you don't have to. We set up the tour for you. We connect you with bloggers to advertise your book by way of interviews, guest posts, and reviews. If you are an author of a newly published book, have an upcoming release, or just want to give a previously published book new life, a virtual book tour is your answer. Check our tours out at www.wnlbooktours.com. Visit me on Facebook. I am the owner, Paulette Harper. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. 
hope you are having fun because I'm having fun too on this edition of The Right Stuff. We are talking to author A.R. Robinson. She is the author of Love, God, and Tattoos. The entire series is available on Amazon.com. What I want you to do is get a copy of this book, read it, make sure you leave a review. Authors need reviews. I've told you that over and over again. It helps us breathe at night. It gives us feedback about our writing, and it helps us to get better at it. So that's why I want you to go ahead, love of my sister, get a copy of her books today, Love, God, and Tattoos. And the AR, you know, uh, we've been talking, just having such a great time. I haven't had an opportunity for you to go into the books, you know. So we know we're talking about <laughs> Alcatraz, and it's not a prison. It's a young lady, and we know she's a tattoo artist. We know it's about her seeking spiritual um, seeking spirituality and, you know, trying to find, you know, what's going to make her uh, true, uh, for the lack of a better term now. And before I do that, uh, Deborah had a, a comment. She said, um, the geisha room scene with Traz and Rico embodies Proverbs 13.22. That's what I got of it because that whole situation could have turned out bad. Deborah from Sweetwater again, thank you so much for responding Ooh, 13, to that. 22. Let me look that yeah, up real quick. Yeah, I'm looking at right now. So I want to uh, make sure that Deborah got her comment out there because I know others will be wondering what's going on as well. You know, like, what is she talking about? See, that's why I want you all to go ahead and get a copy of this book today. Go ahead and get a copy mm. of the first book. And 1322 says, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's the Amen, Deborah. And so, yeah, you know, so. All kinds of revelation I didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's thank good. You. you know, so I want you to go ahead and respond to Deborah about that. Go ahead. No, I love it. The wealth of the mm-hmm. um, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So, um, yes. Yes. So when we become, when we give our lives to Christ, right, no matter what situation we're in, when we believe in Jesus, we are therefore the righteousness of God in Christ. And in Love, God, and Tattoos, Alcatraz gets saved, but she's still in her situation, right? So he doesn't mm-hmm. abracadabra, hocus pocus. She, he didn't get her out of that situation, not because he couldn't have, but because she didn't listen, right? She, he mm-hmm. was giving her all these unctions. He, God, was giving her all these unctions. The Holy Spirit was leading her to do these things. She chose not to listen like we don't normally do. And so she yeah. ends up in these really different situations. So one scene, I think is what she's talking about is a negation room scene. And that's when um, she's going to dance. She's going to strip for, I think this is the first time. And she's walking with Rico. Rico is, is um, almost an angel. She's really a Japanese angel who she was been in the sex trade since she was four years old. Um, she is not mm-hmm. a believer. She's Buddhist. But she looks out for Alcatraz. She can tell she's spoiled. She has no idea what she's doing. So she kind of takes her under her wing. And anyway, as Alcatraz is walking towards the stage, she hears the Holy Spirit say, you are the righteousness of God, even though she's going to strip. And then she makes a comment to Kariko, and Kariko is just like, I didn't say anything to you. And, you know, Traz is like, you just called me righteous, because Traz is still not, she's not in tune with the Holy Spirit to the point where she knows that's him talking to her. She doesn't know that's God talking to her. She thought it was a human being. And so in, even in the midst of the darkness of all that's around them, the Lord's still speaking to her. And then in the midst of speaking to her, speaking to Kariko now, because she's like, God's telling you you're righteous, and you're about to go strip for a whole bunch of pedophiles, basically. You know, mm-hmm. so that's basically mm-hmm. what the series is about. It's about this girl named Alcatraz. She, um, like I said in the beginning, the first 13 years of her life, very blessed. She was born in, in San Diego, and she had a very blessed, childhood her parents die or her adopted parents die when she's 13 years old so she's an orphan and then mm-hmm. she goes to live with her adopted uncle or I guess he's her uncle I don't know step uncle however you say that and then she gets abused sexually and that's kind of where it goes from bad to worse and then the you know counselor kind of takes her out of that home and she runs away goes back to LA and she hooks up with Kariko who is a high-end call girl um, and she kind of just lives that life. She finds her gift as a tattoo artist, so she goes into that world, but she needs to support herself, so she goes into the whole stripping and pornography world. But in the midst of all that, she's really trying to uh, understand God and want to know what his purpose is for her. And the beauty part of this is God's always loving on her and always lifting her up and always telling her she is the righteousness of God. You are my, my beloved in whom I am well pleased. It's just a matter of her um, – 
trusting him. And I think that can speak to all of us. You know, she doesn't trust him enough to listen to him. So even though he's guiding her out of situations, he's opening the door for her to get out. She doesn't trust him enough to go. So she does her own thing and she kind of creates her own problems. So it's kind of her journey um, with God in this world. It's eight books. There's five novels, two novellas, and there's one 40 day devotional. And mm. yeah, it's called Love, God, and Tattoos. I'm working on the eighth book now. In fact, I have it right here in front of me. My editor just sent it back two weeks ago. I'm about to send this back to her. So this, the eighth book should be published by August of this year. And then I move on to creating it into a television show because it's just so rich in story. That's wonderful. And I hope you keep us in mind so we can have to come back on and talk about when the show comes out. Yes. Hope you keep us in mind. We'll love to continue to highlight what you're doing and what you're trying to get the – message out there. You know, it's interesting because I was just telling my listeners and my Facebook uh, peeps on Facebook yesterday, I just finished reading a book by a new author. Well, he's not a new author. He's an author on our show before named Mark. And in his book, Mm -hmm. um, this guy had a rough life, very bad. And one of the things that happened that is a connection between your book and his book is that he gets tattoos, but he gets tattoos um, for a different purpose. And then I talked mm-hmm. to Mark. <laughs> Mark loves tattoos. He loves tattoos. But he has, like, tattoos all over his body and all that other, other kind of stuff. And the Lord is still using him in his fiction to reach out. The Lord is using you in your fiction to reach out. And so what mm-hmm. starts to happen is that no matter where you are, you have a purpose in Christ. And I think right. that's what the overarching I think will probably be, I haven't read them all yet, but I think that's what the overarching theme is going to be is that it doesn't matter where you're from, God can still use you. And I know today so many of our youth are looking for purpose because they're looking for attention. They're looking for purpose, not realizing that when you're in Christ, your purpose is bound up in him because he gives you purpose in your life. You know, there's nothing wrong with success. There's nothing wrong with wanting good things. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But it's when you allow that to define you and let, instead of letting Christ define you, I think that's when we start to have problems. And so here you got a girl right. who's about to go strip in front of people and the Lord saying, you are my righteousness. That means he's putting something on her. Let her know that, guess what? I have a purpose for you. You know, and right. I like that illustration that you have. You know, we are at the end of our show today, AR, and I really oh my thank God, you so it much. Oh by. And it always flies, but I always have so much fun when I'm talking to this. I have so much fun. I totally tell people I have, like, the best job in the world and the best ministry in the world. I'm talking to authors. I'm feeding my uh, frenzy of book loving with all my authors. I can't get them all yet, you know, but I'm like, I have Mm -hmm. you on my TBR list. I do have you on there, you know what I mean? And so I just love – I just love the fact that I get a chance to talk to people like yourself who are in the kingdom doing very different things. Um, Oh, uh, Deborah asked one more question. She says, "She, um, are you writing more books after the series? Um, what, what, what is that other book you're going to write after this series?" That's what she asks. Deborah, yes. thank you for your question. Okay. Yes, Deborah. So, okay, so after the series, right now I'm working on um, the pilot for the TV show and working on the, right. the Bible. But my next mm-hmm. series is called the Holy Series, and it actually gets a little darker. Like the first book is called the Holy Pedophile. Um, Mm -hmm. I really want to go into um, addictions within this next Mm -hmm. series. I want to go, I want to go to, I want to talk to people who are having sex with their dog. And I know Mm -hmm. you think that that's just demonic, but you know Mm -hmm. what? Like I said, God, for God so love the world and the world includes people who are caught up in bestiality. I really Mm -hmm. want to talk to the transgender. I want to talk Mm -hmm. to all kinds of people who are really, um, you know, they're they're stuck in um, addictions that, well, transgender might not think that's an addiction. They might think that's, that's freeing. But there are some that feel that um, they're, just, they're just caught up in whatever habits that they have, and they're just caught up in a um, in a dark place that they want to be free from. And I feel like that's really my ministry is, is to talk to people who feel like um, almost like the Lord can't help them because what they're doing is just so bad and what they're doing is just so wrong and they're condemning themselves for what they've already done and just mm-hmm. to preach the finished work of the cross and how it's already been done for them. And literally as they turn their lives to Christ, they don't have to stop doing what they're doing. Just turn your lives to Christ and start a relationship with him and allow him to feed into you through his word and through his wisdom and through his truth and who you are. And whatever it is you're doing that's not of him will fall off. It's kind of like um, – I liken it to, I don't know much about gardening, but I know the mm-hmm. sap. 
So, like, I'm from Chicago, so we have four seasons up there. And I know, <laughs> you know, when it's beautiful now, we have when I have our fall, it's dropped it gorgeous in the fall in Chicago. But come winter, those beautiful um, brown and red and golden leaves, they fall off the tree. And it's not hard. <laughs> it's very easy. And I almost feel like that's the Holy Spirit. When we come into a relationship with him, whatever that's in us that's not of him will fall off of us. And it will be very easy. It's not hard. And whatever it is, there's no reason to feel shameful or guilty or condemned. You know what I'm saying? I just I just feel like people need to know that they are loved unconditionally by God, no matter where they are, no matter what they're doing or have done. They are loved today by God. And he wants a relationship with them, no matter what a pastor may be saying. Because a lot of people in the church who are still preaching hellfire and condemnation on people, they don't have a revelation of Jesus. They do not know why Jesus came. And so they're preaching this Old Testament theology and just basically breaking people down and making them afraid of God and afraid to come into a relationship with God. And God is literally on the opposite side. Like, no, I came for this. This is why I came, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's basically, I forgot the question, but anyway, that's the whole purpose of, oh, the next series, the Holy Series. Yeah. That's the purpose Mm -hmm. of the next series. That'll be what I'm I'm going to start working on. Yeah. After the Mm -hmm. TV show, maybe even before then, we'll see. I have a lot of ideas, but that's, those are the two next things. Well, I'm glad because, you know, when I went to California for the Southern Christian Writers Conference, which was absolutely fabulous, I talked about taboo subjects in Christian fiction. I talked about that. And I said, you know, there are subjects that people don't want you to talk about, but the things that you just mentioned need to be said. It's not for the people out in the world per se. It's for the people sitting in the pews. You know what I'm saying? It's for those sitting there every Sunday. It's so funny you said that. Oh my yeah. God, I just got this revelation because I really thought the Holy Series was for the world. And this just came to me a couple of days ago. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. No, this is for the church. Th- these are yeah. the people who are coming to church every Sunday, who are struggling, who are maybe even going to Bible study. But what they're dealing with is so dark and they, they're so afraid of rejection that they don't mm-hmm. speak on it. And they don't say, I love my dog so much that I do whatever I do to him every Friday night. They don't say mm-hmm. that because they don't want to be kicked out of the church. But you're so yeah. right. And that literally mm-hmm. just came to me a couple of days ago that I I am speaking to people who are in the church that don't know that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, no matter what they have done. Jesus has given them his identity and taken Mm -hmm. our sinful identity on the cross. That was the whole purpose Mm -hmm. of the cross. It is a great exchange. Amen. You know, I really, I really am digging what you're doing, AR. I really am. So like I said, let's make sure that we keep in contact. So when you come out next, yes. I'll be more than happy to have you on there because this is stuff that we talk about. And a lot of people don't like to talk about because it's so right. kind of great on the nerves and we don't want to, you know, do we really have to talk about that? But the more, like I said, during my presentation at the conference, the silence is not always the answer. I said, sometimes the right. silence will kill. You know, there are people sitting out there hurting, but they can't say anything. Right. If they say anything, someone's going to know. But like you said, you know, Christ's love supersedes all of that. And he could take our addictions right. and our and our issues and our problems and our hurt and our pain and our suffering. He takes all that. And guess what he does? He gets rid of it. Give but we have to focus on it. We have, we have to live a yes. life of victory. And it's not easy. That's definitely, I know you're going to tell, yeah. I know in your books you're going to hit that. It's not easy. Okay. I'll yeah. use a very simple example I've used on the show before. I used to be addicted to Mountain Dew, all right? And I used to drink two <laughs> liters of Mountain Dew a day. Well, I'm being honest. I'm Whoa. being honest. I was addicted to Mountain Dew. Two, two liters? liters a day. Ooh. Two liters So you must day. have really bad teeth. No, actually, they're good. They're not too bad. Okay. They're not too bad. Well, <laughs> so you flopped. You know, you know. And the Lord spared me, but... Uh, but at the same, well, one in the back, my teeth got messed up in the back, you know. And I mean, one okay, time, yeah. uh, I could actually hear, like, I could hear the spirit saying, stop drinking this stuff. You know, your teeth are rotting out, mm-hmm. especially in the back of my wisdom teeth. I'm like, well, you know, it's all right. You know, it's just the buzz, you know. So that happened. Um, I stopped drinking it this year. And it's so interesting. Like, when I have a bad day, the first thing I want to do is get a Mountain Dew. That's the first thing I want to do. I want to get a Mountain right. Dew. Not that the Mountain Dew is going to make the bad day go away. Not that the Mountain Dew is going to be actually helpful for me. It's just the fact that I'm used to it. And that's what addiction is. I'm using it's a very simple right. one. Right. You know, and some, some people, and that's why some people don't want to talk about their addiction because their addictions may not be that. And we all got stuff we don't want nobody to know about. We all right. have Right. I want nobody to know about my secret sin. Yeah, some people say, this is my secret sin. I don't want nobody to know about it, you know? And so I'm glad that you, that God is using you to call attention to these secret sins and make them so secret anymore, you know? Because there's someone right. out there who's going to hopefully be blessed by what you say. I also say secret sin, you know, quote unquote secret sin, uh, because they're not really secret because the Lord sees everything that we're doing. So, you know, um, 
Mm-hmm. But I'm glad he's going to use you for that, AR. So let's, let's make sure we keep in contact after the show. Uh, you know, whenever, you, you, know, you know, drop an email and stuff like that. Uh, we are out of time. So I want to give people a chance to follow you online. So go ahead and tell us where we can find you online. Okay. The website is lovegodandtattoos.com. I'm on Facebook and Twitter at Love God Tattoos, and my email is Alicia A L E S H I A at Love God and Tattoos dot com. <laughs> This show is always about encouraging authors to write. And so I want you to speak in just a few words. I want you to encourage those authors out there whom God has given the gift to write, to pick up the pen and write. Okay. Um, The first thing I would say would be to create a discipline. Okay. Um, If you are called to be a writer, you need to write. So if you're in the process of writing a book right now, I would choose something small, say 500 words a day, five days a week. Okay. 500 words a day, five days a week, that's 2,500 words a week. That's 10,000 words a month. If you're writing a romance, romance is usually about 60,000 words. It'll take you six months. If you're writing uh, science fiction, that's 100,000 words. It'll take you 10 months. But you need to be writing, and there's no reason why you can't write 500 words a day. You can literally write that in 10 minutes if you have a story. second thing I want um, to encourage you is to see yourself as a writer. Um, it's very easy, and this this happened to me in the beginning. Um, I was working for the Marriott, and people would ask me what I did for a living. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm a manager at the Marriott. And I really never talked about a writer because I wasn't making money as a writer. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm not really a writer because, you know, I'm not making money from it. But the truth was I was a writer because I was writing every day. So I would like to encourage you to see yourself as a writer, visualize yourself as a writer, as a full-time writer who's making an abundance with your writing, who's spreading whatever you're spreading, whatever message you're spreading, the kingdom with your writing. So that's number two. The third thing I would say is educate yourself on the publishing industry. You know, um, it's great. The Bible is the most important book to read. But at the same time, publishing, there's a whole wealth of information to learn about this industry. And it's changing daily. New York is really confused about this whole indie publishing thing. So I would really educate yourself on the publishing industry. I would start with a blog. Her name is Joanna Penn. She's from London. It's thecreativepen.com. She's a great resource to learn about the publishing industry, marketing, and basically your field that the Lord's called you into. So I think if you do those three things, write every day, create a writing habit. Um, Number two, see yourself as a professional writer. And number three, educate yourself on the publishing industry. It's going to be a matter of time until we all hear your name. I hope all of you took that in mind, that the three steps was discipline and visualize and educate. And I think yes. that really sums up what we're doing, kind of like love, God, and tattoos, if you think about the correlation, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, really excited to have you on the show, AR. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me. Can't wait to thank have you, you back. Thank you for having me. Can't wait to have back soon. And we were talking today to A.R. Robinson. She is the author of the Love, God, and Tattoo series. I hope you were blessed just as I was about the series. So go ahead and get a copy of Love, God, and Tattoos today on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. Love and My Sister Day. Make sure you leave a review. Authors need reviews. It helps us breathe at night, helps us make sure we're getting better at what we're doing, all kind of good stuff. And so what I want you to do is go online today. Go now, pick up a copy of Love, God, and Tattoos. The first book is called Alcatraz, The Lost Pearl. The second book is called Alcatraz, The Righteous Pearl. Find out about Alcatraz, and it's not just a prison either. (laughs) Maybe, or maybe it is. We'll find out. Go ahead and get a copy of that today. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I hope you were blessed by AR's testimony, by her words, by her books, and I hope you learned that what she just learned, she, um, she also put in her life. She went ahead and wrote Stuff. Thanks again for joining for this edition of The Right Stuff. I am the queen of Tuesday nights, Parker J, and you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com. To hear this show and other shows, visit the show archive at therightstuffradio.wordpress.com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time.